did grow up with their parents here, do you know what feel as though your parents' culture influenced you as a child? Or um, do you think that they might have tried to raise you as more American? Um, was there a point between the two? I would be like labeled as like not American because um, there were not a lot of Asian or other Asian students. Um, so I was just like, you're Asian. Um, but then at home, my parents would um, say how American I was compared to them and like um, other family members. So it was like, am I American? Am I Japanese? Am I Japanese American? But I'm like Japanese on paper. So it's just like juggling around with that um, for a good portion of time. Hey, I got into Lehigh and my mom was like, how much is it going to be? And I was like, oh. <laughs> like not even like a congratulation. It's like good job or nothing. It's because like their whole idea of coming in here was like, like this is where I was supposed to be. Like it wasn't like, I didn't have fundamental choice here. I was supposed to be in college. So I feel like that's why like she didn't really like congratulate me. But it still like kind of hurt to like not hear it. Like, like I did so much for this and you're not saying anything. Chinese culture is more reserved. I get more introverted, more quiet when I'm like being my Chinese self. But when I speak like English, I'm more outgoing. I put myself out there more because like the whole American culture is kind of just like, you know, everybody is more expressive than the Chinese culture. But I think I'm kind of awkward in both. Really hard to try to connect with my parents who've grown up in Vietnam all the time, and to connect with my truly American peers who like celebrate Thanksgiving, Christmas, and they do like big family dinners and like all those holidays. It's just like really hard to figure out if I'm like whole or if I'm just like in bits and pieces, you know. And it's like I'm still like trying to figure out that balance, and I'm like still trying to figure out who I am, but like right now I just have one foot in both cultures. I'm Cambodian, so I bring like Cambodian food and uh, the kids would just like make fun of like the, my food and stuff and like I just, I kept, I didn't care. So I like kept bringing food in middle school, I'm like, well, they probably just don't got good food to eat. Right? So, <laughs> insurance like I had to translate the documents I had to translate everything that came in through the mail and it was really frustrating because I, I don't know what this stuff means like how am I gonna translate it I don't like I can't decipher this I don't know what any of these adult terms mean and it was really frustrating because they would get mad at me or upset with me I don't think they were mad at me they would be upset they would be upset because um, they didn't know what was going on I didn't know what was going on it was just a lot of frustration between us. My parents and I, we applied for the green card in 2003 and we finally got it in 2016. So, but I'm the only one right now going for a citizenship. I feel like that's also like a close period line like if I were to like have kids and let's say I like married like outside of my culture, like would my culture just disappear? Because like I learned Spanish through like my parents just speaking it. So if like I hear someone that their person is also English, and their second language is in Spanish, and like, are my kids ever gonna learn Spanish? My little brother, he doesn't know Spanish, so like the language barrier is there when he goes to Mexico, and he can't communicate with like my grandparents, and I don't want my kids to not be able to talk to my mom. Like, I want them to be able to. So like, we teach me these kind of things. 
and I'm just like super cool. He was like, he was like, in my mind, he's like super cool, we play soccer, you know. And then one day, um, you know, he got uh, immigration and customs enforcement, and then he got, and, um, and then he got uh, you know, he was sent to, to uh, immigration detention. And then eventually, you know, despite all of our efforts, literally, all of our like savings for the like six weeks of the month came to the US working very hard, three jobs every day, uh, and asking money and loans and you know, um, juntas and things like this. Um, just wasn't enough to be able to get into it. Yeah, we have mother, like she had she expected me to do something like computer science or like be a doctor. I'm just like, it's not me. It's not me. <laughs> He's like, well, you go to college, right? You, you're studying to do something. I'm like, yeah, I'm studying, but I don't know what I want to study specifically. And he just, like, he just doesn't understand that, like, there's so many options. And, like, you don't pick right away what you're making, like, what you're studying. And, like, it's just so hard trying to explain. Like, there's so, like, so much room to study anything. And like anything you study doesn't really necessarily pick out what career you do in the future. Because what he thinks is like, oh, you, if you study chemistry or something, you're going to go to medical school and then you become a doctor for the rest of your life. I mean, I personally learned a lot and I loved hearing about all of your guys' experiences and thoughts because I can learn so much to a lot of you. Um, 